Hey and welcome back to my channel, I'm Daniel and today I will go over my custom keyboard layout that I use for my video editing so that you become a faster video editor. I actually use Premiere Pro but everything that I tell you today you can actually implement in all video editing programs so it doesn't matter which program you are working. I dedicated a whole video about how you can become a faster video editor and this part is just my keyboard setup but if you're interested in that I will definitely link it up. There's a couple of things that you can implement to become a very very fast video editor. Why was that important for me? I'm in day 45, 46, 47, I can't count at the moment because I'm batch recording. This is also why I become faster right now because I batch, this is one tip. Oh, it's an insider tip, I forgot in the other one. So you got this tip because you watched this video. I did now daily vlogging and so I had to optimize my workflow. I already became a faster editor just over the three years of traveling because I didn't always have the time to make my videos. So I had to become faster because I also run my other business and YouTube on my videos is not my main thing. So I had to optimize it and become more efficient. I believe that you should monitor your own workflow so that you can optimize your workflow by using keyboard shortcuts that kind of like match your workflow. But maybe you get some ideas or insight or tips or even functionalities that you didn't knew that exist that I use on my day-to-day -day video editing here on YouTube. My background is actually gaming many many years ago. I played a lot of games. I started with like Starcraft 1 and I had to use keyboard shortcuts just to become fast. Very very fast. Also as a mechanical engineer and all the 3D programs that I used I always used keyboard shortcuts to become faster. It's just the way it is and if you are editing and you want to become faster and you're not using any keyboard shortcuts yet, you should definitely start to use them. If you're completely starting out now, then you should maybe just start with the keyboard layouts that are already designed from the program itself because there's one advantage with this. When you start to learn them, you know how it is in a default setup. So when you go to a computer from someone else, you don't have to mess around with his keyboard layout and you can just use the standard one. But then when it comes into more detail, this is why I said the workflow is important and you have to optimize it for your workflow then change it. Why was it important that I said gaming? In gaming I always used my left hand and my right hand for the mouse so everything that I had to do was on my left hand. But let's jump into my keys and I will tell you what my keys are. On Q and W I have ripple trim forward and ripple trim backward and I have my timeline here on a pointer and if I hit W it will trim this part to the next clip and whoosh, the same with the opposite. If you hit Q, it's ripple trim backwards. So basically from here to this one here, whoop, and then it's gone. My E key, I bound to delete clips. So when I selected this one, I can delete it. If I mark something, hit E, this is deleted. Or for example, if this is, um, is empty, I can just click it, hit E and it's gone. So I don't have to go over to hit the delete key on the other side of my keyboard. But if I hit Control R, this is the speed of a clip. The A key, everything to the right will now marked. This is pretty handy because you don't have to zoom out. Everything will be marked here. Say you are working here somewhere at the intro part. You can hit A, bam, everything is marked and so you can change it. The same with Shift A will be backwards. So everything from the left side will be marked. When I edit and I go through my footage, normally what you, what I was doing in the past, I was like hitting C on the keyboard for cutting and then cutting pieces out if I had to cut something out, if I can't use like Q or W. Because I do that a lot, now I can hit S and will cut, make cut straight away here. S again. With D, I can select E, this is deleted. S. S, D, E, selected, bam. And so I can go Let's through my timeline. Here now, since we met in ripple trim, Australia ripple forward, or girl, ripple or trim, woman, or everybody. ripple trim, <laughs> ripple trim, <laughs> S. Okay, I don't like this one. D, E, back, it's gone. So with the Z or Y keyboard, depends where, like in Germany I have here Y, but you can just use it on Z. I basically have the speed when I watch something. This is 10 times. And only one time more is when I have had shift and Y or shift and Z. Then you know, really like Try your two times, and also three times, nice four times, and five times. And that is a powerful if you hit X on your keyboard, this will mark the selected clip wherever you are at the moment. In Control Shift X, deselecting. C, I kept as C, this is already standard, just to make the cuts. V is my selecting tool. Another key that I use on my keyboard. So let's for example see this one. I have a couple of clips that I cut and I don't want that the audio every time when it's going here that it clicks and or gives a little pop or whatever. You can use constant power, choose that in between. But now you have to kind of like do this for all of the clips, right? You can select all of them, it's Shift D and now I have all of them with this one. Keep in mind by default those 
transitions are way longer but because I use them a lot because I have a lot of cuts I changed the default so go to your setting preferences and then under preferences you can go to timeline and on the timeline you will find the audio transition default duration and I changed that to 0.1 and with control D you can actually do the transition between two clips so that they fade in. So this was my keyboard layout that I use for Premiere Pro, but you can use that even in other programs. Just keep in mind, use your left hand and don't use it all over the keyboard, just use it where it is and you will become faster over time. I also made a video how you can save your keyboard layout so that you can use it on a different computer or in a different version. So for example, in my case, I had to downgrade from 2020 because of a glitch problem that I had with my new machine to 2019 and then my keyboard setup, my custom setup wasn't there anymore. I linked that one here, you can see it there. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe and dingle dingle the bang bang bang, you know what to do. We see us tomorrow. I'm Daniel, bye.